and welcome back to our homestead. Today I want to share with you about my water kefir or as we pronounce it kefir. Now most of you may know that uh, kefir is very popular in many countries including my Slavic background. It was very popular where I come from so my Russian mama always served to us kefir but that kefir was made based on dairy and it could have been made with cow's milk sheep's milk or goat's milk what regardless it was basically dairy milk was inoculated with live bacteria and it would turn into this beautiful almost slightly thick but not thick it was still thin um beverage that was slightly acidic beverage that was inoculated with live bacteria probiotic bacteria, which were very healthy for us and i will never forget mama often packed my papa's lunch to go to work when he would work out outside she would pack a glass bottle of kefir with a sandwich like a cheese sandwich on sourdough or something like that and that would be his lunch and that was very common to see it back in the soviet union time because kefir did not need to be refrigerated for a short period of time and it would not go bad because it was already sour it can't go bad again so uh today though i want to talk to you about water kefir and water kefir or water kefir is a little bit different okay a little bit different even though the grains in inoculation is the same process but as you can see there is no dairy in it so for those who are lactose intolerant or try to stay away from dairy products for whatever reason this is a wonderful option so look at this beautiful water kefir that i made now um let me show you how I make it and I'll explain how long it takes to make and I'll explain to you why I believe that it's really good for us. I don't have to believe it, it's actually science. There's more and more research shows these days that water kefir and probiotics are really good for us. If you like the content of this YouTube channel, please subscribe. Just hit that little bell button below this video and subscribe so you don't miss any new stuff that comes out because I post something every week and I try to bring different and new information each and every time. All right, so I made this water kefir 48 hours ago. Okay, 48 hours ago. First 24 hours, it was sitting in the jar just like this okay so i'm gonna bring this a little closer to the camera so you can see it so the grains are on the bottom okay once i strain it i will show you what it looks like so they were sitting for 24 hours i have sweet water okay I put some granulated sugar in here and i put a tiny little pinch of salt and explain that to you why i do it as well and i have grain sitting in the bottom I loosely covered it with cloth so um, it can breathe, right? And the first wave of fermentation takes place in the first day or two, 24 hours to 48 hours. And that depends on the temperature. Now this is winter right now. And my kitchen never really gets that hot unless I'm cooking continuously. So especially at nighttime, it can go down to mid 60s, upper 60s, I should say. So it's kind of cool temperature for these probiotics to proliferate and keep growing. So they like warm temperatures, warm weather. So in the summer when it's hot and you leave it out on your counter, and it's hot temperatures, this is gonna be ready to be consumed in the uh, first 24 hours. But on the cool days like, such as today, um, in the middle of the winter here in New England, this may take 48 hours. So to speed this up a little bit, I literally take this jar just like this and I put it on a shelf above my wood stove. It's like a shelf uh, several feet away from the wood stove and it's nice and pleasant and warm, it's not hot, because hot may actually kill this. So hot water, high temperatures can kill this. It likes a very warm, pleasant environment to grow. All right, so after 24 hours, I strain it and I put it in a tight container. Notice how I'm working with glass containers, glass jar, glass bottle, and it has to be airtight, okay? So this has to be airtight. And that's when the next step 
the second wave of fermentation will happen here in the next uh, container. And that's, at that point, you can add some sort of a flavor to it. You don't have to, but you may just to make it a little bit different. And this is a really nice substitution for lemonade or ginger ale because it depends on what you flavor this with. Now, I love to flavor with just a little bit of lemon juice, just a little bit, maybe a couple of tablespoons or so for the whole bottle. And I will throw uh, maybe, um, I don't know, one teaspoon of sugar because when the second fermentation begins to happen and it's an airtight container, the, the live probiotics that are in this water will be eating the sugar, okay? And it will be creating CO2 and that's where you get that fizz from. So basically it's like drinking lemonade except that it's not sweet and it's actually good for you because it's full of probiotics okay now you may put a couple of slices of fresh ginger and a little bit of sugar just a little bit i'm talking about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon and it's not going to be sweet because the live probiotics they will eat that up they need it okay but as they're eating they're going to create that co2 and they're going to create that bubbly fizz that's so so delicious and it's going to be a very natural and good probiotic filled ginger ale so much better than at the store now some people like to flavor this with some berries and they will throw some fresh strawberries or blueberries just a little bit and that's going to change color to um like a little bit blue like a little bit darker a little bit pink with strawberries and again you need to add just a little bit more of sugar just to allow those probiotics to feed on something i hope that makes sense all right so let me show you how i'm going to make a new batch all right so i'm going to show you step by step and I will show you things that you need. So I'm gonna need an empty uh, jar, just because this one is already full, so I'm gonna be using this jar, and I have a cover, okay? I'm gonna need some clean water. I prefer to use um, not chlorinated water. We have well water, so it's perfect for us, but if you guys using tap water, I recommend to make sure there's no chlorine in it, okay? No chlorine. I'm gonna need some sugar, okay? I'm gonna need uh, one quarter cup of sugar. So I'm gonna measure out some sugar, all right? Uh, what else do I need? I'm gonna need a vessel and a strainer because I need to strain that. And I need something to stir with. So I have a wooden spoon. It likes wooden spoons, uh, but not metal to stir with, all right? so. All right, so I have all of my things here. So first things first, I need to strain this water kefir that I made 24 hours ago. Now, I'm smelling it, and it has a very mild acidic smell because it has lactic acid in it. Oh, very nice, it smells very nice. If I give it a taste right now, it's gonna be slightly, slightly sweet, even though I put a whole quarter of a cup oh beautiful grains quarter of a cup of sugar in here all right so i strained it i'm gonna bring the camera closer so i can show you what these grains look like and let me tell you every time you use them every day they get bigger and more of them they are growing okay so this is what it looks like and it's basically a translucent they almost look like beads but they're very soft to touch and they see through, okay? So these are the same kind of uh, grains that we use, kefir grains that we use for milk, okay? For milk-based kefir. However, a couple of things to remember. If you ever take these grains after you use key, uh, water kefir and you made milk kefir, you can never go back to making water kefir. Now you have to only stick to using milk kefir from that point on and you would have to get brand new um culture you can order this online and i will leave a couple of links in my description where you can purchase them from okay because you can buy them online all right so here we strained it all okay now i need to prepare the next batch so i'm just going to push this aside so this is my jar and i'm not even washing it i'm keeping it just as like that 
okay i'm into that i'm gonna be adding regular sugar and this is my cane sugar organic sugar and i'm gonna put one fourth cup so just a quarter of a cup okay and i'm gonna be filling it with water and this is well water but if you guys don't have well water i suggest using unchlorinated or filtered water without chlorine better yet without any fluoride either so i'm just gonna stir all that water uh water with sugar make sure that the sugar dissolves okay before i add other ingredients in here all right that looks pretty dissolved now to that i like to add just a few grains of celtic sea salt and the reason why i like to do that because it adds a little bit of minerals not much but at sometimes it's important to be there to balance it out and uh it has something for the um, for the grains to eat now i'm just gonna fill up more water in here and i'm gonna be adding the grains back in here okay and i'll top everything else with water so this is the proportion i should be you should be using guys okay let me just dump this all safely in here and all in okay beautiful for one quart of water which is four cups you need fourth cup of sugar and four tablespoons four tablespoons of these grains all right so guess what this is done that's all there is to it this is done i'm gonna throw a towel over just like this i'm gonna secure it because we don't want to invite any kind of bugs or anything and i'm gonna go ahead and put it in a warm place again so i'm gonna go back and put it on my shelf above my wood stove where it's nice and warm right now in the winter if this was summer months i'm just gonna leave i would have left it right there on my kitchen counter and it's gonna be perfect 24 hours so this is the first wave of fermentation okay now let me show you what i do with the second wave of fermentation where kefir water actually develops its fizz and its flavor for my flavor i'm going to be using lemon juice and i have some fresh lemon that i'm just getting the juice out of it okay keeping all the seeds behind okay there it is so i have a clean jar and this is glass jar and i'm just gonna pour that juice right there to that i'm just gonna add a little bit of sugar not even a full teaspoon okay just like that i'm gonna put it in there okay now you can add some ginger to that or some other things to flavor this and i'm going to be returning that kefir water that is 24 hours old we're going to put it in here There it is, beautiful. Now, if you're using a container that's exactly one quart, I always recommend to leaving about an inch or so of headspace. Why? Because once it starts producing CO2, it needs a little space because you don't want this bottle to blow up. And now it's, I have a nice tight cover. And now again, this is going to go through the second wave of fermentation. It's going to create that fizz. It's going to develop that flavor of almost like lemonade. So it's going to have the live probiotic in it that we so desperately need every single day, right? And it's going to be delicious on top of that. So it's an easy way to give it to your kids if you want to give it to your kids, to your fussy spouse who doesn't like to take probiotics. So here it is. A very good way to stay hydrated and give yourself some life probiotics every day now I did some research to find out how many different strains of probiotic is in the kefir water and there was some slightly conflicting uh, information I found so I decided to go to PubMed you know the more scientific research out there and I found that it can be anywhere from 12 different 
probiotics all the way to 24. So again, it probably depends on, on the grains that we have and um, how many it will produce uh, as far as probiotics. I'm not talking about how many billion because that's a whole different story. I'm talking about how many strains. Now, probiotics are very important to our gut health. Okay, unfortunately, we live in a very sterile environment where we think that we need to be uh, completely gut free of bacteria. But that's not the, the point. The, the fact is, is that we have bazillion and I use the word bazillion because nobody really knows exactly how many bacteria we have in our body. There's some literature that um, says that we have more live bacteria in our body whether it is in our GI tract, in our skin, in other orifices, including your mouth, it ha we have more of those foreign bacteria than our own cells, self cells. So I find it very interesting. So we need to keep our gut health healthy. That means we have to feed them good bacteria. And kefir water, water kefir is very, very good idea to do. Now you guys also know that I love sauerkraut and other fermented vegetables because you just need a little bit, literally a quarter of a cup or a couple of tablespoons on your plate every day to give yourself those healthy, healthy probiotics. If you like something spicy, kimchi is a great idea. If you love something else, uh, miso is good fermented uh, products. But you know, with my Slavic blood, we love sauerkraut. And just a few days ago, I made a big batch in my big crock, stone crock full of uh, good fermented sauerkraut. And it's so, so good. And it's crunchy and it's perfect. So yeah, so I'm gonna keep fermenting this for the next 24 hours and then it's free and it's ready to be used. So friends, I hope you are encouraged to make um, healthy probiotics. Yes, you can go ahead and buy them from different companies, but sometimes you don't know what's in it. You don't know if it has fillers, how many fillers, how many probiotics really in it. Are they really viable probiotics? We don't know. And the jury is still out. But here you know because when you crack this open and you're gonna get that pop because all that gas formed inside, you know it's alive. You know it's alive. And you're gonna get that fuzzy taste. So the next one I'm gonna make, I'm probably gonna make with uh, ginger because I wanna make some ginger ale. So when somebody has upset stomach, that's a really good thing to have. And in the summer when we have beautiful, beautiful berries, to harvest in a garden. I'm also gonna make it with fresh berries. But in the meantime, friends, be encouraged and try something new.